Hey guys, today I am super excited to be bringing you my first tutorial covering part one of a six part series about Godot random generation. Specifically, in this episode, we will be talking about arrays in the RNG class. Do not worry if this tutorial is too easy for you though, because in each part we will get more and more complex and then we'll build off what we learned in the last tutorial. And when you have finished all the tutorials, you will be able to make two styles of randomly generated game maps shown here. With this said, let's get into the video. So the first thing I'd like to cover in this tutorial are arrays. Um, right now, you're probably like, what do arrays have to do with random number generation? But I'll get into that later. Right now, I just want to show you what an array is, especially if you are a beginner. So we're going to go up to the top of our script because we'd like to declare variables above each of the functions because they can be considered global variables. So if you declare a variable inside of a function, you won't be able to access it outside of that function. But if you declare it outside of all the functions, then you'll be able to access it in ready physics process or anything else. So anyways, let's go back to arrays. So an array is like a list of items. So we can write var groups equals and then brackets. These basically define it as an array. So to define an array, we can rather put empty brackets here if it doesn't have an initial value, or you can go like this, use semicolon, and then you can put array. So this defines it as the type of array. So if you put array and you don't have an initial value, you can just do this, and then you'll be able to assign values later. In an array, you can assign different variable types and then you can have multiple as a list. So let's say our, we have a group of fruits. So this is an array. It's a list of items. So as you can see here, each one of these is a string. But instead of making three different variables that are all strings, one called apple, cherry, and banana, we have an array that stores them all. So um, yeah, each of these can be any type, though. So we can have this as, like, we can store a list of positions, or we can store a list of like integers, so we could have like one, four, five, like in an array, instead of like just a list of each of these strings of fruits. So for example, I'll do var positions. It's not a great title because there is a, in a node 2D, it has a property of a position, but for now we'll do, um, we can go, and then we can assign it a vector two, which is like an X and Y coordinate on a plane. And we can go like, let's go like two, four, Oh, I misspelled vector. vector two, and then we can go vector two comma three one, and now we have a list of positions that we can access at any time. So in this part of the tutorial, we are going to be covering multiple methods that that array class has. So if if let's say you have an array here, this is the first method that we won't be using necessarily in this tutorial, but in later tutorials we'll be using it. So I want to cover it right now. But let's say we can delete positions. So we have, um, let's say we wanted to have two lists of fruits. So let's say this represents bag, bag underscore one. So this is bag one of fruits. Let's say you have the same amount of fruits, the same type of fruits in a separate bag. Then we can go for bag underscore two, define it as an array because that it makes it more organized if you define stuff. It's not necessary but you can do it this way. Um, and let's say, instead of rewriting all of these terms again in a separate array, we can just go equals bag underscore one dot duplicate. So basically the duplicate function on an array, when you change a value in bag two, it won't change value in bag one. So that's what duplicate does. So in an array, you would go print bag underscore one, and then you use the two brackets, or at least I think that's what it's called. <laughs> I'm sorry if it's not, but, um, and then you can go like zero, but for now, or one. But so basically what we're doing here is that we're getting the index of an array. So as you can see here, each, there are three items in this array. Each item has an assigned integer. So the first item is zero, the second one is one, and the third one, is two. So it's kind of odd how it starts at zero, but that's how it is. So if we were to print bag zero on ready, we can go run the function and it would print apple, which apple is the first term. 
So let's print bag two, and this should print banana since we go zero right here, one, and then two. And then it should print banana. Yep, and it does. And now if you print negative one, it would actually go, it would say there should be a term here, like before apple in the bray. But what it's going to actually do, it's going to loop back to the end, and then it's going to print banana. So most of the times I haven't really used negative indexes of an array in this, but I just wanted to show you that because that's how it can work. Using an index, though, we can also assign values. So what we can do is we can go back to zero, and we can go to bag underscore one dot append. So appending basically says that I want to add another fruit to this bag. So let's append a strawberry. So we're going to append this value to the array. And now what we can do is we can actually print the array. So this will print the whole array. So it'll basically print all of this plus strawberry. And perfect. So that's how you can append stuff. And you can also reassign values if you want. So let's say we don't want the apple to be the first item in the bag. But you can go bag one, zero equals straw berry. So yeah, and just like that, we can print bag one, zero, get the index of the first one in the term, and then it should print strawberry. Another function that we'll be using on arrays two is going to be clearing. So what we can do is that, let's say we took all the fruits out of the bag, then we would go bag one dot clear. So when we clear this, it basically says, all right, just delete everything in the bag. And now we can print bag one, and it should print an empty array. And yeah, right down there, perfect. Okay, now after doing all this, we can finally get into randomly generating a number. So what we can do here is that we can go bag one dot shuffle. So what shuffling does is it basically says like, okay, we start with all these in order. Let's just mix them around. So maybe banana will be first, cherry will be like third, and then apple will be second. So now we can print bag one zero. So when you see a bag one dot shuffle, it shouldn't be apple. So it's now cherry. Now we can print it again, and it's still cherry. Let's print it again, and it's still cherry. As you notice, it is not. Sh it shuffles once, but then it doesn't do it. So what we need to do is we need to randomize the seed of the actual script. So basically, when you when you call randomize and ready, it means that this won't execute the same thing over and over again. It's a bit more complicated, so I'm not going to get too deep into it, but let's just see what it prints. So it prints apple now. Now we can do it again. Prints apple. Now it's banana. That was just bad luck. Now it's cherry. So now it's randomizing. Every time it prints a new value because it's shuffling. So this is a very good basic and a very useful function when it comes to randomizing arrays for random generation in Godot. Okay, now in this part of the tutorial, we are going to get into the random number generator class. So in the random number generator class, it's similar to the, the way an array is a class, but it has different functions basically. So we can go, we can make a variable, rng, random, oh my god, I'm so bad at spelling, I'm sorry, number generator dot new. So when we say, when we call this class and we make a new one, we're basically making a new class that we can edit and we can call the functions from. So now that we have rng, we can use some functions from the random number generator class. So let's say we want to make a variable, and we're just going to call it random number for now. So we can go equals rng, and now we're going to call a function from this class. So when we call this function, we're going to be calling random float, which is just random float. So basically, when you call random float, this function basically says, OK, take a value from 0 to 1 that is a floating number which is a decimal. Floating is for decimals, and then integer is for whole numbers. So you're going to call a float, and now we can print, on the next line, we can print random actually number. So we can see what it gives us. And 0.615, and now 
we should randomize the seed again. But instead of randomizing the seed, actually, we can just randomize the number generator, which is similar to randomizing the seed, but it's a bit different. So we go like this, get new number, new number. And so using a random float range allows you to get, like, it's very rare to get the same value since it always is going to like a diff, like a really low decimal place where it randomizes every single part of it. So that's a good way if you're dealing with a lot of stuff, but what I actually like better is the random integer range, which basically this says is we can pass a range right here, one through like, let's say we wanna go, we wanna get a number that can be one, but it can be any number in between one and five and can also be five, then, but this, it can only be an integer. So now what it would give us, it should only give us an integer between one and five. Yep, there it goes. Now we're still randomizing the seed. So we can also do this with random flow. Now merging the two topics that we've covered in this tutorial together, we can actually choose a random item from an array using a random integer. So basically what we say is that we have the range is bag one dot size. So basically when we call the size function on bag one, we're basically saying, okay, how many objects are in bag one? So this should return three. So we're gonna pick a random number in between one and three. And what we can do is now using what we learned before, we can actually find the index of this random number. So we can go bag one, and then we can put this around it and this should return a number and then we're also going to subtract one because if you remember indexes go start at zero so apple is zero cherry is one and banana is two so if we're gonna generate a number between one and three what we could actually do is we just subtract one here so it's basically a number between zero and two so now let's try it banana and then cherry so yeah it's randomly generating a number so that's basically how you merge these two concepts. This is really similar to actually shuffling the array and then getting the first index or any index in it. So, but this is a, another great way to do it and very simple. Now it is time for a project. Okay, so I'm going to go over the project right now. So the first thing that we should do coming into this project is define the variables. So we know that we want to generate three types of loot, coins, potions, and weapons. So what we can do is we can define an array called loot. And we go this and we define it as an array. I'm just going to define it by putting the brackets around. So what we can do is we can define it coins as as the first one and we can define potion and then we can define weapon so i just define the mesh strings as we don't have variable types for them or we don't have a specific variable for them yet so this is going to be the different types of loot we can generate so i'm also going to make a random number generator class or make a new instance of it so we can go random number generator dot new and so now we have our we have a random number generator and we also have loot so to pick what loot it's going to be i'm first going to randomize the seed as we talked about earlier and then i'm also going to shuffle the array so we'll go loot dot shuffle call the function on the class and then we can go we can make actually what we're going to do is we're going to make a new variable so you're going to make, I'm going to call it chosen loot. You can call it probably something better. I'm not that great at making names, but we don't have to define it up there yet because we're going to define it down here and we're going to go chosen underscore loot equals loot zero. So now what we can do is since we know specifically for coins, we're going to choose a number if that is cho chosen. So what we can say is if loot 
if chosen loot is coins, then then we can say, okay, now we should pick a random number between one and five for the amount of coins. So we can go number of coin. I'm gonna create a global variable here, number of coins. And then I'm actually gonna cast this as an int. So um, we have number of coins equals RNG, and then we can call the function on the class RNG dot rand um, integer range because we want to keep it as an integer. Go random integer range one comma five. So because we know that we want it to be one and in between one and five. So now that we have this number of coins, we can go. I say we should make a variable saying printed or loot that will be printed. Printed underscore loot. My I'm so bad at making it. It's just you don't have to pay attention to those. It's just as long as you know the basics of it, um, then you're totally fine. But we'll make printed underscore loot equal to coin or we'll do string or no first we'll go yes yeah, string number of coins so we basically what we're saying here is that we have an integer that number of coins is defined as so we're going to make it a string so we can add it to another string called coins and basically this says we have a number so we will say like four coins or three coins so that's what we're going to do and then what we're going to say now here else printed underscore loop equals chosen underscore loop so now that we have this we can go and then we can print printed loop it's such a terrible name i'm so sorry for this but so oh yeah one other thing that I forgot, we have to call rng.randomize, so we randomize that each time it picks. So let's see what it comes out as. So we got a potion that time, now we got three coins. Notice that there is no space in between that, we'll fix that in a second. Right here, we notice that when it says number of coins, what if it's what if the number is one? So you get one coins, that doesn't make sense, so what we're going to do is if number of coins is greater than one, then we can print this, and then we'll use an else statement, printed underscore loop equals string number of coins, or actually, if you want to, if you want to be a bit simpler here, you can just go, <laughs> we can just go one coin, like that, I guess that works, but basically this says we print the string and now this is one coin because this is plural. It's just English, I guess you could say. Yeah, so now it would print that. And yeah, and that's basically how you make randomly generated loot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned from it. I definitely will be releasing a new tutorial soon, but hopefully in around two days, which will get into randomly generating a time map through code. So I'm really excited for that, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you later.